Hi, I'm Jenny Oaks Baker. Welcome to my America's Violinist YouTube channel vlog. I think this is number five. Um, today I'm going to be talking about how I chose my violin. Maybe I should get my violin for this. I'll come back. Hold on. Here's my violin. Um, I'm going to tell you about how I got this violin and um, I'm so grateful for it. So when my parents growing up didn't have a lot of money and so they got me another violin that my daughter is actually playing now that was a good violin. It was quite adequate. It got me into the Curtis Institute of Music. Um, I soloed with Utah Symphony a couple times. It was a good violin but it didn't project so when I was playing with an orchestra, it didn't necessarily rise above the orchestra and get to the back of the concert hall, which is what a great violin can do. And so I knew that eventually, if I did become a concert violinist, I needed to get a better instrument, but my parents didn't have the money for that. And so I just kept, you know, playing my best on the violin I had. But when I was about 21, um, I did a concert in Chicago, just a just some little minor concert. And while I was there, my former teacher, Leonard Brouse, who had been, uh, who was in the Utah Symphony, he suggested that I visit Bain and Fushi, which is a really famous um, violin dealer. And he told me that at Bain and Fushi at the time, they had a Guarneri del Jesu, which is the equivalent of a Stradivarius, that was really famous. I think it had been a violin that Vinyavsky had played. Vinyavsky is, um, has a couple very famous violin concertos. So it was a really famous instrument and he said I should go play it. So I traipsed down to Bain and Fushi in Chicago and I walked right in and said, I go to Curtis, can I please play this violin? And lo and behold, they just like welcome you into the room, open the door and give you a $5 million instrument to play. They don't even check for ID. It's the crazy, I shouldn't, <laughs> now we're gonna get lots of like people wanting to steal violins. It'll be my fault. Anyway, so they don't even really ask for ID and um, they you get to just play these violins that are worth millions of dollars. And um, anyway, so I played this Guarneri del Jesu and I just fell in love with it, of course, because it was amazing. And I, I said, well, maybe I need a better violin. <laughs> but I knew I didn't have money. I said, do you have any that are like kind of a lower price point by millions and millions and millions? And so they brought out a couple of viomes and they brought out a panormo. And this is a, they brought out this one. This is the panormo. Um, made in 1795 by an Italian maker named Panormo. This was actually made in London um, when he was living there. Anyway, so they brought out this panormo and I, I like the viomes but I love this panormo. So I just fell in love with it and I I knew I couldn't have it. It was still way too expensive. My parents didn't have lots of money. I was in school. Um, I wasn't working because I was practicing so much. I just had no way of paying for a better violin. And so I, but I had this competition coming up in San Francisco telling my deep dark, dark secrets and I wanted to play this violin at the competition because I knew it would give me a leg up. And so I said, well, I'd really like to take this violin and um, would you mind if I just took it and played it a little longer? And so they did and I went and I played it at the competition and then I took it home and I was like, mom, I really want this violin. And she kind of berated my father for not still being in the law firm where he was making millions and he kind of went into education and ended up being um, a church leader. So. He, they didn't have a lot of money, but they could have had he stayed at the law firm. So she, let him, she wasn't berating him, but she was sad that we didn't have millions to spend on a violin. Anyway, so we sent it back amidst many tears. And a couple weeks later, Bain and Fushi called and they said they were taking it to Korea and it would be snatched up immediately. And they really wanted me to have it. And so they offered kind of a lower price for us to buy it. And my dad, who's just very analytical, he figured out that if my mom sold all of the stock that her parents were given throughout her life. She could buy half. And if my dad gave me a loan and I took all my birthday money, all my recording money, I've done, I'd done studio recordings all growing up, all my babysitting money, all my Christmas gift money, everything I had and took out a loan, combined that with a loan from my father, I could buy half. And so we were able to buy this violin and then um, over the course of that year, I got into a kind of a chamber orchestra. I was able to pay off my half to my dad. And then when my mom died, I inherited her half. So, um, as my inheritance. So this is what I inherited from my mom. And um, I'm so grateful for it. A couple years later, I met my husband. And had we, had I not had a good violin at the time, I, we would have had to decide between buying a house and buying a violin. 
And I think that's a hard decision for a young couple. So I'm grateful that we didn't have to decide. I already had this beautiful violin. I love it. It's, it's like my musical voice. I haven't named it. Some people name their instruments. I think that's weird. I don't need like a named thing that close to me. Um, besides my husband. <laughs> anyway, so it's not named, but I love it. Um, and people have asked me, how do you choose a violin? Well, I, I fell in love this, with this one. I knew it sounded good. I also took it to a big concert hall and made sure that it did project. Um, another thing people can do is it's good that the violinist, him or herself, plays the violin and make sure that they like the sound under their ear and that people outside like the sound. But it's also important that the violinist have somebody else that's a good player play the violin and the violinist go and listen to the way it sounds not under their ear. So that's important. Also, get a number of good violins. Pick your favorites and then close your eyes and play them without knowing which one it is. And pick your favorite and then have somebody else play them and go out in the audience and listen and pick your favorite. And hopefully those are all the same instrument and it'll be easy and then say a prayer and confirm that that's the right choice. But I'm certainly grateful for God for putting this in my hands. I know it's a gift from above. So. I hope you enjoy the sound of it as well, and I love it. So that's how I found my violin, and I hope you enjoy that story. So tune in next week for another topic. I think we'll take an idea from one of you. So please write in with topics you'd like me to discuss or questions you might have. Um, my social media links are below. You can reach me through one of those means. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.